I just wanted to go over a few things to consider and keep in mind when you're using this plugin about the general setup of the classes within this plugin. So all of the classes are intended to be very reactive and interchangeable due to the wide range of game template examples that I've provided. All of the example games use logic derived in the base classes which have been placed into the common assets folder. And this also applies to any other assets such as the meshes, sounds, textures, and anything that is used in more than one single game example. And a lot of the meshes are reused because I've tried keeping the number of assets included in the project to a minimum just to keep the packaging size and project size down. Having the project structured this way then is going to ensure that all of the classes that interact with each other and our kind of base requirements for a game to run are left in this folder and they will not be removed from the project if you're trying to tidy things up. So you can delete anything from all of the other folders, such as the Flappy Runner, Heli Runner, you can delete those entirely and that will not stop anything else from running. But in the Common Assets folder, you will need to keep everything here and they're going to be the classes that you're mainly working with. Another thing to note is that inside of many of the blueprints that you'll be using. So as an example, I'll just go into the BP underscore player base. If we go to the class defaults, we can see that the start with tick enabled has been set to false. And this is the case for almost every class that doesn't have a function running on the tick event. This is just to keep the performance down, even if you have ticks running which are not doing anything. If you've got thousands of those actors in the level, they're all still ticking away doing nothing, which will add small incremental performance decreases to your project. So I just wanted to mention this because a lot of projects in Unreal don't come with this uh, disabled. So if you come into this class and just try and get something running on the tick event, that won't work and you might be wondering why. So just look out for the tick enabled being set to false. If you decide that something does need to be put on the tick, of course, you can always add a timer or something, which is usually going to be uh, more beneficial and performant. So try and keep that disabled where possible. Another thing to note is a lot of the classes, especially those which uh, have a lot of communication with other classes, such as the level manager base, they have a lot of the properties, the variables, such as the distance traveled uh, set to be private. This is to stop other classes from setting the variable accidentally if you're making updates to the project later. So a lot of the time you may come in, you may be used to be able to just getting a reference to another class and then finding variables through that reference. Now, a lot of these are gonna be hidden for uh, code security. This is a very standard kind of coding practice when you're using more scripted languages, and I've implemented that into these Blueprint classes. Instead, what I've done is used a set of interfaces and provided getter and setter functions. So if you ever need to get a value just to query it, which is the main idea, then you can query that value through the get current level speed or get current distance, however you want to implement that. So this again, just is ensuring that you're not accidentally setting things from other classes because then you'll have clashing logic. And it's very easy that way to lose track of what is updating a value where. And that said, all of the classes, again, do make heavy use of an interface system. If you wanted to know more about this, you can just go into the Blueprints folder, have a look through all the interfaces which are included, and you can find these in the classes. So we can see the level manager doesn't have an interface, but the player will have the BPI underscore player. You can see all of the functions which are housed inside of this, as I've exposed them using at least a Boolean return so that you can see and go into all of the functions here. And again, this is to avoid casting, which can be a potentially expensive call and also starts adding to the memory which is being passed around. Interfaces are gonna be a lot cheaper to work with and they make it super simple to just place things on a function, call through that interface and pass information around that way. So these are the main things that within this plugin, I think may be slightly different to how you've seen other projects set up. Just some things to look out for when you're getting used to the plugin. And I think hopefully this will all become very much second nature for you. And it should, by the end of working with this plugin, make adding and removing things from larger projects like this with a pre-existing code base much, much simpler and much safer to work with.